All right. As you can see, I'm filming on my laptop. I don't I don't even care. I just want to talk about this video. Let me, let me. Yep, those are my knees. That's an ingrown hair, whatever. I want to talk about ED stuff and by ED, I mean eating disorder. I'm not censoring anything in this video. I am going to be talking about it. I don't care if I get shadow banned or whatever YouTube does suppressed by the algorithm. Sure, I already have because I have been, <laughs> I haven't posted in a month, but I want to talk about the rise of eating disorder pro Anna culture again. And it's not that it ever truly went away. This is completely unscripted, by the way. So if I repeat a couple topics, bear with me. I didn't take my ADHD meds today. But especially with TikTok users like King Krabby Patty and Liv Schmidt, there's one other woman that's on here, but I can't remember what her name is, but she'll be somewhere up here. Actually, no, I'm not going to show you any of these people because I don't want anyone else to see them. I don't want them to see their content. I don't want you who's on YouTube to go and look at their content because it's terrible. It is so horrible. I I don't really get personal on my channel. I try not to because I prefer just to keep my personal life separate from any social media life that I have. However, I feel as if this is so important to talk about because we're not getting into the nitty gritty of what eating disorders actually do to you. We're not, this whole conversation is just skimming the surface and I want to talk about it. I want to tell you some of the horrific things that having a restrictive eating disorder does to you. How do, Canon? how do you know? Because honey, I had anorexia. I'm in recovery. I'm in remission. I don't even know what to say. Remission is not quite the right word, but it's what I'm going with right now. I was anorexic from the time I was five. As in five fingers on my hand, years old, to about age 18, 19, I want to say. And I want to tell you some of the shit that it does to your body. Because I don't think you're, I don't think people are talking about what it actually does to you they're only saying oh your hair falls out your skin looks weird it, you get acne um like your farts smell really bad your breath doesn't smell good i need to tell you what happens truly what happens i'm very lucky in the fact that i never went into what exactly what exactly is it called it in person in 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 oh my god inpatient treatment <laughs> I never went into one of those because my parents caught it early enough to the point where I went to therapy for it instead. And honestly, I was kind of just force fed until I started recovering from it. And then age 15 is when, no, age eight actually is when my health problems really started. I'm 23 now. So this was 15 years ago, just from three years of being anorexic from ages five to eight which are crucial developmental years. I mean, your entire childhood is completely crucial development for you as an adult, but especially when you are, I want to say about preschool to probably right before puberty, that's setting you up for the rest of your life. And if you mess with that so badly, there are some god-awful things that'll happen to you, and I'm going to tell you what some of them are for me anyways. First, I think the most obvious is going to be gastrointestinal issues. It's fairly obvious because food, you know, you need food to live. You convert it into sugars, carbohydrates, all that. It fuels your body. Um, protein does the same thing, but carbs go faster and they're often like the target of witch hunts when it comes to diets and wellness. And I have a video about detoxing, by the way. Um... It's linked down below. Starting with your teeth, we're going to start from the alimentary canal and work our way down. So starting with your teeth, your teeth can rot and fall out, especially if you have bulimia because the acid in your bile and your vomit can rot away your teeth. I didn't have bulimia, so I can't talk that much about it, but I do know you also get um, scrapes on your knuckles. It's terrible. Um, you can get infections as well because you just don't have enough in your body to fuel your immune system as well. And then going into your throat, 
honestly not that much happens that I'm aware of, that I'm aware of. This is not what's happened to me. We get into the stomach. Now, you can cause a whole host of problems in your stomach. For me personally, the biggest one that I struggled with is gastroparesis. I was in... If you don't know, gastroparesis is the paralysis of your stomach. There is a spectrum. There's entry stage to, I think, complete paralysis where you have to be on a feeding port or a tube. And in some cases, they'll end up just removing the stomach entirely and you'll have... I don't remember exactly what it's called. It's an it, it goes into the ileum, which is the first part of your small intestine, which is where all of your nutrient absorption happens, and you just get fed through there. Um, some people choose to keep their stomach if they can't afford it, if they don't need to keep their stomach. Like, if they don't need to have it removed, then it's fine. But I have entry stage, and it is very difficult because I don't think people understand how much that affects your life. The nausea that comes with it, the bloating that comes with it, the having to cut up your food into teeny tiny little pieces so it's more easily digestible. When you're first starting to recover in a sense after you get the diagnosis, you have to eat very soft foods, very easily digestible foods. And I also have celiac, but that's something I developed after COVID. That was not as a result of my eating disorder but regardless, it did impact my recovery from gastroparesis that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. These are things you're going to have for the rest of your life, by the way. Um, so, you know, just think about that as well. And then you have your small intestine. You can mess with the nutrient absorption. Um, the cilia can be damaged. Your whole digestive tract really can be damaged. But um, your peristalsis which is the movement the contraction the wave-like movement that moves food through your digestive system slows down because it's not getting enough food which can lead to constipation it can lead to bacteria releasing a lot more gas you're bloated all the time you're gassy everything you eat makes you feel sick no matter what and then the constipation which is dangerous because it can turn into a fecal impaction or you get so backed up, you start vomiting feces, and then you have to go to the emergency room for that. And it's terrible because then you can become laxative dependent, which a lot of people with eating disorders use laxatives to purge. Don't do that. I'm telling you this to warn you about what's going to happen to you. Because starving yourself, binging and purging, it's not going to get you what you're after. Okay? It's not going to get you what you want. All right? So then you also have your bladder because you're dehydrated, your kidneys are having issues, you put a major strain on your heart. Um, I have a little bit of arrhythmia because of it. Not like severely, I can still go under anesthesia, of course, but it is a problem. Your hair falls out, it never grows back in right. You're always cold and it's awful. You're cranky, you're moody because you feel like shit physically and mentally you're not well. You are very ill mentally. And I feel like one of the biggest things is infertility in men and women. A lot of most eating disorders affect women more than they do men. So we're just going to stick with that. But a lot of women don't realize you can make yourself infertile because you don't have enough fat on your body. And if you starve yourself for so long... Your body's going to focus on keeping everything in your core, your heart, your lungs, everything like that. And your brain is going to focus on keeping that alive and it's going to let everything else die. It does not matter. So, again, you don't look good. I'm here to tell you right now, you don't look good. You look sick. And that might be a little dangerous to say, but I feel like some of y'all need a really harsh reality check with this. When you look ill, you don't look healthy. You, you look like you need help. And a lot of people are like, oh, I just want to be skinny. I just want to be this. I just want to be... No, you don't. No, you don't. Because you can die from this. You can physically, metaphorically, and literally die from it. You will kill yourself. Do you want that? Do you want to kill yourself? I don't think so. 
I think you just want to feel better because you were made to feel like shit about yourself. I was. That's partially what happened to me. And you set yourself up for a lifetime of health problems. Don't just recover while you can. And it's only going to get worse from here. And Liv Schmidt... Liv Schmidt's content really scares me. I'm very concerned about her. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a healthcare professional. I might be in pharmacy technician school right now, but I'm not I'm not qualified to make a diagnosis, but I have the experience of 15 years of that. I kind of think I know if it looks like a pig acts like a pig, talks like a pig, it's probably a pig. I know people use the word duck, but bad attempt at a joke right now. But regardless, I just wanted to talk about this because it's really bothering me to see this resurgence. But what I'm also happy to see about this is people actively starting to fight back against it. I love seeing videos of like Liv Schmidt content like, eat with me because Liv Schmidt and King Krabby Patty exist sort of thing, or, like, you know, fighting back against it and being, like, hey, you can eat, it's fine, like, you don't need to under-eat and over-exercise, like, that's totally okay, you don't need to do this weird diet, you just eat, you know, and it's easier said than done, of course, but it's really nice to see that people are actually taking an active stand against this, and I really... I'm proud to see it because this wasn't a very popular thing back when I was in the thick of it, especially on Tumblr. If you were on Tumblr like I was, I don't know if that makes us veterans or not, but I think it does make us troopers for having to see this resurgence on TikTok because everything is cyclical. Everything gets rediscussed and just comes right back around there's so much discourse that's already happened on twitter tumblr instagram snapchat any social media site before tiktok it's already been there but i am happy to see like i said i'm very very proud of people for saying this is not correct this is not healthy this is very dangerous content to be promoting you know we're concerned about you please eat like we don't want you to die you know anyways this is going to be an unedited video because i don't want to take out anything i don't want to edit this i feel like a very candid conversation is important and editing is not going to be involved in that because we don't edit real life we don't edit the bad things that happen to us we don't edit the good things that happen to us and i feel like when you're talking about something like this don't leave anything out. So with that, I'm very proud of you if you made yourself eat today because I don't want you to die. You know that, right? That's why I tell you to get something to eat, drink some water, eat your vegetables. You can dress up vegetables and ranch. It's okay. I promise. There's no guilt in eating because food is meant to fuel you. <laughs> so with that, Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening to me ramble for however long this video is going to be for putting up with the mess in the background. And remember, get off your phone, go outside, get some water, eat a full, soulful meal. I want you to eat a meal that is good for your soul, not don't think about the body, think about your soul. (laughs) Go to sleep early, take a nap, say hello to someone, compliment a random stranger, and have a great day, night, spring, summer, fall, winter, wherever you are, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!